The most viewed article on the Strategic Institute website is an article on 10 USC 2373, Procurement for Experimental Purposes. What are the practical purposes of this authority? 10 USC 2373 has a long history. It was originally enacted, if you can imagine this, uh, as part of the Air Corps Act of 1926. And, it is, uh, and even though it was called the Air Corps Act of 1926, the, the particular section that enacted the statute originally applied to both military and naval aviation. And the statute was credited with uh, greatly advancing the uh, uh, maturity of, of aviation dur during that early period in the 1920s and the 1930s. Um, the statute uh, was overtaken by events uh, by World War II and uh, um, Congress enacting wartime measures that allowed for flexible procurements of, of various kind. And then when that war uh, was ended, and, and, by, and by the way, uh, in the interim, the statute had been expanded beyond aeronautical uh, supplies and activities to include uh, signal activities and uh, chemical warfare activities and ordnance. Um, after uh, World War II, um, the uh, Armed Services Procurement Act was enacted, which was suppo supposed to um, inject flexibility into the general contracting process. Uh, and for a while it did, but over time regulations built up and the general contracting system under the Armed Services Procurement Act, uh, under the original Armed Services Procurement Regulation, the Defense Acquisition Regulation, and eventually the Federal Acquisition Regulation became this highly regulated, over-regulated system that was sort of constipated. Uh, and in the era of acquisition reform, beginning in the 90s and the two, 2000s, people were, were searching for ways to speed up the process, to, to streamline the process. Uh, I happened to be uh, talking to um, staffers on the Senate Armed Services Committee uh, about this general subject of how we deal with speeding up uh, innovation and bringing new capabilities into the department. And I mentioned um, the statute and its history going all the way back to 1926. And uh, one of the senior members on the Senate Armed Services Committee was a guy by the name of William Greenwald. And he, Bill became fascinated with the story of uh, this particular statute going back over all that period of time and the fact that it was it was still being used but it was being used in a very narrow uh, way uh, so we uh, we chatted about it and came up with some additional language which greatly expanded the dom domains to which the statute is applicable uh, and it increased its scope to, to now it's it's not just uh, available for experimentation uh, and validation of technology, but it, it, uh, all, the, all the way out to uh, maintaining a residual operational capability. Mm -hmm. in, other, in other words, if you, if you acquire an experimental capability and say use it in the field, when the experiment ends, that doesn't mean you have to retire the capability. You can continue to, to use the capability for, uh, for military purposes. So, I mean, the statute itself is, is uh, relatively short, and as long as it's used for the litany of purposes, you know, from experimentation on out to residual uh, operational use, the, the Armed Services Procurement Act, the basis of FAR, doesn't apply. And the statute also says it, that the uh, contracting can take place within or outside the United States. So the, the statute uh, gives you sort of a wide open field of where and with whom you can contract uh, as, as well as being free from the uh, overhead of the Armed Services Procurement Act and the Federal Acquisition Regulation. Uh, you, you don't use it for everything. You use it for experimental purposes, uh, for demonstrations of technologies. And you, and you use it within the domains uh, uh, that are stated in the statute. Although, as Bill and I discussed this, it, it, we were talking about multiplying the domains, and we said, well, you know, there are certain things 
uh, certain technology areas that are just sort of inherent across the board. Things like software, robotics, artificial intelligence. We don't need to call those out separately in, in the statute. When those things are applied in any of those domains, the statute uh, is applicable to them and, and they can be used. So, I mean, the statute basically means what it says. Uh, the, the traditional procurement statutes and regulations don't apply. Buy things in the limited quantity that you need to either experiment, demonstrate, or maintain a residual operational uh, capability. Uh, and the rules are, are very, very few. And it al allows you to contract on a rapid and a commercial-like uh, basis. I mean, uh, think of if you wanted to uh, evaluate one of your near-peer adversaries' weapons. Mm -hmm. And the, the adversary had provided the weapon to one of its own partner countries. I mean, you could go to the partner country and say, you know, I want one of those jet fighters, one of those hypersonic weapons, one of those rifles, uh, and purchase it from them, bring it back to the United States and carry out tests. Uh, and, and in fact, that has happened and the statute has been used in that way. The statute is not limited to that sort of uh, of approach. Mm -hmm. It's just that, that that's a very unique way that the statute uh, can be used. I mean, the, the statute uh, means what it says. If your purpose is experimentation or demonstration, uh, the normal rules don't apply and you can uh, make your purchase in a strictly commercial fashion. Um, and I, 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 another issue is, uh, you know, well, oh, well, what good is it just to experiment or just to demonstrate, uh, just to have a residual operational capability. Well, that may be exactly what you, what you need. On, on the other hand, the virtue of the statute is once you, once you conduct your experimentation, once you conduct your demonstration, you now know what the capability, what the technical capabilities of the subject of your demonstration is, and you also have a better idea what it's going to cost if you put this thing into production or if you developed it further, mm -hmm. because you've, you've gained additional insight on both of those matters. And so that's, that's the value uh, of the statute. It seems like it's a good place to start when you're Absolutely. trying to acquire, acquire knowledge about what the current landscape is or the current uh, state of the technology uh, is. Absolutely, and, and you can conduct development, you can develop a prototype or a demonstration using the authority, or you can buy an off-the-shelf commercial product and conduct an experiment using that product in order to, to determine its military utility. What you are looking for is knowledge. This seems like a great place to start. Can this authority be um, combined with other other transactions authorities or other authorities or as we call it stacked? And how would you do that? Uh, well, I mean, for example, the the prize authority, 10 U.S.C. 2374A, uh, says specifically that it can be used in conjunctions with other other authorities. So in, in, the, in the prize authority, not only could you award perhaps a relatively modest uh, uh, monetary prize to the winner or to the participants, but then, then the, the item could be purchased and used for further experimentation uh, uh, after, the, after the prize dem demonstration. Uh, you could use it uh, uh, as the basis for a subsequent sole source justification. Um, I mean, it's, let's, let's say it's a commercial product. Uh, you, you buy it rapidly off the shelf uh, and conduct your experiment. Uh, and that serves as the basis for going into a FAR-based contract on a sole source uh, basis. Seems to have wide-ranging applications. Software certainly comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it's, it, it is underutilized, uh, its potential is much greater than its, its current use. And by talking about it, we may have find some people in the audience are interested in exploiting the potential of 2373.
It's not very difficult to understand. It's two paragraphs long, the statute. Right. I think most people think it's just too good to be true, perhaps. It's good and it is true. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to learn more about 10 U.S.C. 2373 or other other transactions statutes, please visit our website at strateginstitute.org.